What's going on, everybody? It's Matt, a.k.a. the Lumberjack Landlord, and we are here for the long-awaited, COVID-delayed third segment. She lived. It's good news. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of the many that's lived. But uh, again, Emma, thank you so much for taking the time and going through this project. This is the third and final. So this we did uh, starting the project of the Lumberjack Landlord Expense Tracker Sheet. We've done session one, which was day one. We did session 15 or session two, which was day 15. And now the month is closed out. So that. And today is the big reveal. And so going into this, we thought that you thought that you'd spend about a thousand bucks in a month. And I thought that it would be closer to three, but I gave the range of two to three, likely probably around 25, but I gave the range of two to three, probably around 25. And so inquiring minds want to know, hundreds of people have watched the video. Many have said, holla at your boy. So where do we come in? I got to know, because I've not heard the number yet. So where do we end up? All right, here we go. $1,990.51. Boom. <laughs> you purposefully were looking at that number and wanted to make sure to do just under two. I know you missed worth 10 bucks worth of stuff. There's no yeah. doubt in my mind you missed 10 bucks worth of stuff. That was pretty detailed. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So originally you thought a thousand bucks. You literally doubled what you thought you spent. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that depressing. We can fix it. It's okay. It can be fixed. And so what is the takeaway based on kind of what you saw? What were some of the takeaways that you had based on every single day, the discipline of writing down most, hopefully all, but probably just most of everything you spent. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did. For I mean, under, myself, just under, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just under two grand. So where did you end up as far as the things that you saw that you spent money on that, you know, what does it change about how you're going to do things kind of moving forward? Did you identify anything like that? I will say like, I have a lot of purchases at 50, like literally like right around that amount yeah just change and that's what's adding up really quick like i have a few like large like bills and rent mm -hmm. yep sure. um, i mean that car issue but yep. other than that it's like definitely those medium purchases add up yeah um, and every time i'm like oh i'm not gonna spend that much i do <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but, but, but that's really i mean but that's the thing is that's what happens to everybody you know, that happened to me that happened to, um, you know, me when I was single, that happened to me when I got married and it was, well, we think we spend this much. And then it was, oh my gosh, we spend this much. And it's because every person drastically underestimates how much they spend. And then what they do is they say, I don't understand how we never have money left over at the end of the month. Yeah. And it's because it's the same thing. No tracking happened. And so just this 30 day exercise of daily discipline literally having the app on your phone, having the spreadsheet on a Google doc, having on your phone, updating it in real time, or taking a picture of the receipt and doing it at the end of the day, whatever kind of, you know, meets the need for however you best work. This now is giving you an understanding of exactly what your footprint is. And now the biggest piece of news from this is you're saying you're going to do it again. Yes. Um, you're doing another 30 days. I'm going to do another 30 days. Okay. Um, because I feel like it was just an expensive month. And I know you're saying like, oh, every month is an expensive month. Every month is an expensive month. month. <laughs> but I feel like there were some things that were like, I'm, I'm gonna try it again. And then I think that it'll be different. I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm just, so. <laughs> really hard fingers crossed. It's different, right? Yes. <laughs> So she doesn't believe it. She's doing it again. Hey, awesome. Let's do it again. Because at the end of the day, too, the, the other thing that I think is really important is, yes, you get to 2,000. Yes, you thought you were at 1,000. You know that there's some things that came up in that number that are 
like a car needing repair and things like that. Like I get it, that happens. Um, however, there's a couple of things you didn't count on. One, you didn't count on the car needing a you know multi hundred dollar repair. And number two, I'm sure you didn't count on getting sick and missing a bunch of work. Right. Right. So this is why we go through this exercise is because we don't want to be living paycheck to paycheck. We want to be living far below our means, which is really finding a way for your monthly bills, if you can, to be no more than 30% of what you're actually taking home. And then that gives you some spending money on some fun stuff and some saving money on some other stuff. But when you're looking at a house, you know, you look at the number that you have that you pay right now in rent. And that's a low number because you're living with what, three roommates, I think you said. So you're living with three roommates. However, not a long-term strategy, I suspect, <laughs> to be living with three roommates. Three and so, yeah. so the, yeah. <laughs> three more girls, yes. And so that's going to do nothing but get more expensive as you get further on in your life. That number is going to do nothing but continue to go up unless you want to live with three roommates. Which I don't. Which you probably don't, right? <laughs> so the good news is, is that we've got the first 30 days done. It's become, has it become part of, uh, part of like what you do has become kind of second nature to buy, enter, buy, enter, or buy track and then enter at the end of the day is, has this become kind of second nature for how you're doing things? It's spending? still, it's a pain. It's still a pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's, it's making me aware of my purchases. It's sure. making me actually think I'm spending money versus just swiping or cash. Cash is like the worst. If, just, <laughs> like, if you get a receipt, like that never happened in my head. I'm like, I didn't spend or lose money, but it's, I mean, you did like, right. Um, so yeah. One, so. one thing I encourage people to do too is go to cash, but make up your mind and have that budget in place beforehand. And what people will find that they'll do is they'll spend money and it'll be gone the first few weeks. And then they'll spend, they'll be like, oh, I, I was able to save a little bit. Oh, I was able to save. Like, that's what I, that's how my wife turned into a saver mm -hmm. is because she would spend and spend and she would go through it and go through it. But then when she had a limited amount of money, as soon as that money was gone, she couldn't spend anymore. <laughs> so she had to be much more considerate about what the things were coming up later in the month for the different budget and things like that, like for groceries and such you know, meal planning, being within a budget, um, all of those sorts of things that you need to be, <clears throat> excuse me, able to do. And that was something that made a big difference for her is it actually turned her into a saver. You know, she had something like an eight to hundred dollar a month budget uh, for groceries and gas and all the things that we went through. And it was kind of funny because she got it down to where she could actually live on 500 and she could actually save three. Um, and that's how we ended up being able to afford Christmas you know, one year was because she saved that extra few hundred bucks. Um, so one of those really important lessons that I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you did it. I knew you'd make it through and you wouldn't die. <laughs> Don't like it. But I also knew the numbers wouldn't be nearly as good as you thought they would be. Uh, but now we have another month to kind of go through this process. Now, what we'll add into that is over the course of the next month, really starting to understand the markets that you're targeting and creating what's called your buy box. One rental at a time does a great job of covering what that is. Um, they create something called a buy box. And then there's, I've talked about other boxes off of that, which is the rental box, which is what you can rent for. And then these other types of things. Um, but that buy box is what we need to focus on next in your process to make sure that you're doing the homework in MLS, looking at properties, understanding what they're not only what they're selling for, but if work needs to be done to get them ready so you can rent them, that sort of stuff. So really getting much more into the real estate side. We haven't fixed the finance piece, but now you're far more aware of it and can probably much, much more powerfully control it. Um, if there were, I like to always say that that expense tracker is that it's an expense tracker, but that's not the only part of the equation. There's the income side of it as well. And so you had kind of both kind of going against you, which is your normal spend. But then on top of that, you know, missing work due to getting sick. Yeah. I love what, side hustle jobs too. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And so what does that make you think in the next 30, 60, 90 days? What adjustments does that potentially have you make? Um you know, based on what you went through this month with getting sick. And then also on top of that, just kind of what your actual numbers were, what, 
what strategies or what ideas have you had based on having done that, that you're kind of thinking, okay, this is why I want to do a second month of this. Um, definitely. Like I've been reaching out to some families and just to get a little bit more on the side. Um, and that like, nothing's viable at all. Like those jobs can cancel. I could get sick. Like, sure. so just saving when I can, that kind of, it didn't scare me, but it's like, wow, like this could be really bad for me. Like uh -huh. having no income and then the expenses still obviously have to pay rent and bills. Sure. Um, As a landlord, I recommend you always pay your rent first. I do. <laughs> pay early and get a discount every month. Perfect. Smart. Very <laughs> smart. So yeah, so you were saying? So just like, just upping the side hustles and making a little bit more on the side. So yeah, but we see how quickly all that stuff can be taken away. So living within your means, having a big cushion that you can kind of really lean back on. That way you're not stressing out about it because Evan knows if he gets sick and you're added stress, that only makes you sicker. Um, and then also having more side hustles. So it's not just controlling the expenses, but it's actually controlling the expenses and bringing in more revenue, right? It's really, it's really both sides of the, of the balance sheet. Um, would you agree? Is that kind of something that you're going to be focused on for the next 30 days is talking about how much more income? I think that's something we don't have to share the number, but I think it would be interesting to say, this is how much I made month one and then figure out how much more percentage wise you made month two. Yeah. I think that might be something that makes sense. And then look at how you adjusted your income up doing more work and being more cognizant of having to get out there and having to do more side hustle work. And then also how you adjust your, your spend down, because I think you're going to have a massive net there. I think you could net an extra thousand dollars focusing on that. Right. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at some of those numbers and see what kind of numbers that can be. Because like I said, I think there needs to be a percentage increase in your income. Um, and that's based on how much effort you put in. And then also on the spend side that, uh, you know, obviously, as you were saying, a lot of those $50 things can definitely be cut out of the budget and yeah, you know, more, sure. <laughs> more control over those areas. Um, one of the things that I wanted to leave you with and leave a lot of people that are watching this video with is there's one thing that I heard and it really absolutely rings true, which is wealthy people invest first and spend second. Not wealthy people, otherwise known as poor or not wealthy, they spend first and invest second. And so the most important thing is it might not be investing in a 401k or, or, a, or a stocks or a house right away, but it's investing that money in yourself, putting it aside. So when the right opportunity does present itself, you're working in the real estate business. You see that deals can just pop up just like that, right? Yes. And so the most important thing is having all your ducks in a row, all of that preparation leading into the moment of opportunity when it presents itself and you being able to execute and move on that deal, right? Because mm -hmm. that's going to be your life-changing moment right there. And that doesn't happen by mistake. That's something that happens. It's a concerted effort, just like you're doing, managing your costs, controlling your costs, adding more income. These are all things that you're going to want to do to help get you to that kind of next step. Definitely. Say it with enthusiasm. Definitely. Yes. I want to work more. <laughs> Much <laughs> you want to work more because later on in life, you want to work less. Yes. Yeah. Right? And so nobody gets to retire and that's the other thing too, is, is that so many people, they finally have money. And we talked about this, I think in episode one, so many people have money, but they don't have it until they're 65 or 70 years old. Right. And at that point, like, I mean, you can enjoy it maybe for a few years, largely speaking, but there's plenty of people that also don't ever get to enjoy it, you know, because of an untimely demise. And so the most important thing is getting to a place where you can live on what you make more and make more than enough than what you need. And then you really have financial freedom and independence to do whatever it is you so choose. And you're starting young enough where that's still possible. Awesome. Perfect. So guys, we spent a ton of time creating awesome content. Want to thank Emma for being as transparent as she was. I promised her we wouldn't go line item by line item of what she spent because largely speaking, I don't care. Um, <laughs> it really just comes down to taking out the things you know you can take out, recognizing that you're going to have expenses that are going to come up that you can't count on. Um, and you know what? That's perfect training for being a landlord. You don't know that a 
thousand dollar bill isn't coming because somebody didn't fix because somebody didn't tell you that a toilet was running nonstop. I just got a thirteen hundred dollar water bill because somebody didn't report well, that a think- toilet didn't stop running for thirty days, and it was completely avoidable. <clears throat> but it didn't happen. So again, now I just have to take it. It is what it is. Being a landlord, suck it up, way it goes. But I wasn't expecting it. Thankfully, there's enough in the fund to be able to cover that and cover the expense of that being for the house. So Emma, thank you again, guys, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Please make sure you leave your comments for Emma and for me. Um, This is part of the process and part of the course that I have coming out. Um, We are basically battle testing it, wanting to make sure that people actually see how applicable it is and fine tune it, make sure it's gonna be something that everybody can use and find value in. So Emma, thank you very much again for your time. No problem. Anytime. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. Well, guys, we will circle back again in the coming weeks to get another update from Emma and how she's doing through the process because she's already started the next phase. So we will get that uh, posted probably in the next couple of weeks. But Emma, thanks again very much for your time. And everyone, thanks so much for watching. Take care.